Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. And in this lesson, we're gonna go over CSS selectors and how we can find them through a browser, and we're gonna use Chrome for this, and how we can store these in code and allowing us to manipulate these, whether it's clicking or checking if they're displayed or getting the text and, and all kinds of fun things. Um, and, and, and the first off, we're, we're, we're gonna look at where we, where we left off with our test. If you notice, we went to a, a web page and then we just checked for the URL. Um, we know that checking for the URL, the likelihood of that changing is very, um, is a very low percentage that that will ever happen uh, unless there's like a redirect or something, you know, and it's, it's not a bad test, but we want to go further, right? Um, so I'm going to change this up, um, which, you know, we learned how, you know, making a, you know, setting the string up here so that we don't have to change it in two different places and keep that dry principle going. Uh, don't repeat yourself. So we have Facebook, um, and uh, we're gonna head over to Facebook here, uh, and we'll we'll talk about this reference thing in a second. But we'll go to Facebook, and um, you know, usually if you right click um, and you're in Chrome and you go to Inspect, um, it gives you the ability to kind of uh, see all the elements in a web page. So you see how I'm, I, I'm kind of moving my mouse up and down all these elements, and it's highlighting what each one is, and. Um, and, and this is really going to be really helpful for you to know exactly like what you're pulling and making sure you get the right element and things of that nature. So this can be kind of, um, you know, uh, intimidating. They're like, okay, well, how do I know which one's right, which one's wrong? And we're kind of going to go over that. Um, and the first thing you should kind of get used to, I'm going to give you this um, kind of CSS selector reference sheet that uh, W3Schools use. And I, I really appreciate like, you know, how clean it is. And it has an example and a description and, um, and, an, um, <clears throat> and it has all kinds of different ways to kind of look through a CSS selector. Now, uh, honestly, you probably will own, I mean, even in my, in, in, when I do any kind of automation, I'm probably only using maybe five to 10% tops of this stuff. Um, because when you do your CSS selectors, you want to be really specific. Um, and, and we'll kind of run, or we'll kind of go over some exercises here and kind of see what I'm talking about. So, um, the, the first thing is, is, uh, I just want to give you an example of, you know, usually you can just get a CSS selector quickly by, you know, going to an element and we say, oh, this, um, this div here, let's, you know, right click, uh, we'll go copy. I'm just going to copy the selector, come over to our code. Um, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to, let's see, uh, just save it as a string. We'll just call this selector equals boom. And you have this really kind of long selector here. Now this is, you know, this is great. It's easy. It's done. You move on with your life. Now, if any point the 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 you the web page changes, you're gonna kind of run into some issues where maybe it's not UI sticky anymore. Maybe maybe somebody put a, a a lower case, or you know, and then they put a bunch of dashes, or it's not even input anymore. It's input, you know, two, uh, and it starts changing it. Uh, or, or better yet, instead of a div, it will be, um, you know, maybe like an anchor. And then this is now um, two divs. It's like a div, then a div. So things often change on websites constantly. And that's the biggest thing about automation is constantly kind of keep up with development and always have to come back and change, come back and change. So you really want to be smart about how you write your selectors. Um, so some of the first things that I always look for are IDs. Now, IDs, you can only have, well, you should only have one on um, your DOM at any point. So you should, you should always have a unique ID um, available to you because it's really easy. So if it ever moves or ever gets nested somewhere else, you're always going to be able to reference it, um, which is really great. Um, and that's that's represented by a hashtag. Um, I think here, right here, this is saying that this is the ID, uh, U underscore O underscore E. So let's just kind of give you an example. You want to see this evaluated. Let's just copy that. And we're going to go to our Facebook here. And one of the cool things inside this DOM, um, ooh, let's zoom out a little bit. If you do a, a control F for a find, you can now paste your um, selector here and you can see it evaluate. So I put the uh, ID U underscore O underscore E and it evaluates. There's one of one available and it's saying right here. It's this uh, first name. If I hover over here on the left, you'll see it's the first name uh, input box. So that's really nice. So I know that every time I call this, I will always know that I'm going to get the right one every single time. 
Uh, so that's that's why I like to use those. Now, most sites are not are all sites. Sometimes you're maybe developers. They they may not put IDs. Uh, you know, in React, sometimes they just don't put IDs. You know, they're reusing components and and things of that nature. And so usually the the second thing that I look for would be class, um, and that's usually represented by a dot. So if I go back to our our selector that we copied and uh, paste, let's uh, put it back to what it used to be. Um, you know, this is saying div, the tag, dot, and the class is UI sticky placeholder uh, input. And the same div has another class, UI sticky placeholder, empty input. So if we just copy this, copy, and we come back to our uh, web page, and we paste it, now you see that, oh, it's it's hovering, oh, it's highlighting the, the input field here on the left. However, if you notice, this says one of seven. Um, so that means that there are seven of the exact same um, CSS selectors being evaluated here. So it's showing you all seven. Now, usually this is a, a negative thing. You, you don't really want to do this if you're always trying to make sure, like, I want the first name and only the first name. So and because there's a possibility that uh, you may grab another element down the line. So uh, you don't you want to make sure that this always evaluates one of one. It's very important you do that. And so so to kind of uh, fix this, we, we want to right click, go back to inspect. And um, since our so really our input here is the one that we actually want. Um, this was kind of more of like just a test here. Um, and if we just right click, we're just going to see. Let's just see what it what it uh, evaluates to. We'll just copy it, come back here, paste. OK, so this one already has a a, it looks like a specific ID um, evaluated to it. So copy, come back here, um, we'll evaluate, paste, one of one. So this, this one's probably the safer one to use. And on top of that, it's much cleaner. Um, you're going to run into issues sometimes, I'm sure, when uh, let's come back to our uh, messy one. Let's copy, selector, uh, <clears throat> we paste. So you're gonna come. You're gonna you're gonna uh, kind of have something like this, and I'm, I always do the copy paste sometimes, just so that's easier for me to kind of see. Okay, what are they looking at? And let's try to clean it up, and you, you kind of do do that to kind of get you familiarized with CSS selectors. But on top of that, um, you know, you can kind of figure out like what's going on here. So let, let's go back. We'll copy this, evaluate this, and and see. Okay, so it starts off with this div right here. And these arrows mean that it's anything that's nested inside of um, the the parent, um, I guess, uh, element here. So this is saying that the div dot UI sticky placeholder input, you know, the div with these classes, uh, which is here, have a child of div. So that means that give me any div that is under this parent. Now, luckily, we only have a single div right here. However, if we were to, can I add, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to edit some T, uh, HTML here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste, um, whatever. So let's just change it a little bit. I'm going to say enter. Oh, whoops. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm manipulating things now. Um, so now I, I reevaluated uh, the CSS selector here down below, and you notice that now it says uh, I have two. So the same one, if there were two divs in here, it would evaluate to both of these. And again, we don't want that, right? Because we always want to make sure we're getting the exact or the the exact element that we're our, our desired uh, element is. So we you you never want to just pull tags. You, you always want to use an ID or a class. And then or another attribute that's made up within a uh, uh, an element. So you know ID class. There's probably something like there's like placeholder or you know area label or data type or whatever it may be. You really want to try to make it as unique as possible, but you want to make it as small as possible. Um, you want to give it some kind of um, let me say you don't want to make it super rigid. Uh, you want to give it some flexibility uh, because again you want to find this element and and interact with it. Um, and whether or not it's in the right place or not, that's something that you're going to have some other automated tests kind of handle more so than than this. So, um, you know, it's always good to to make sure not to use just tags. Or if you do have something um, like this where it has the tag and just remove it, you don't need it. Um, you know, if I if I take this div out, 
it will evaluate the exact same. See, too. It, it's just a, it's just to make it more strict. And, and I, I'm not a big fan of really strict CSS selectors. Uh, it usually breaks tests so often, and there's so much kind of overhead already to make sure that these flows work every single time. You don't. This is like the the most changed and most obvious place that things break. So. I, you know, at the end of the day, if I were to fix this one, I would move that div, and then this div at the end here, um, I would change it to something like, um, let's see, what is it? What is it? Uh, let's re refresh this page. Come back, um, inspect this input. Uh, so I noticed this has a name first, first name. Um, oh, sorry, no, it has an ID. That's what we want, ID. So we would have just changed this to ID and called it a day. Now, hypothetically, let's say it didn't have an ID. Just just for the sake of just trying to figure out another solution, I would have taken I would have taken this um, uh, this first name here. Uh, just because I know this is first name, first name input, it seems to be a good one now. The problem is we have this name now. We know what class is, we know how to do IDs, so let's look at our reference. How do we do the name? So. These are elements, okay, but we don't we don't want to do that. Um, oh, attribute, that's a good one. Attribute, oh, with value. So um, here's some options here that we can do with attribute. So let's let's do that now. Um, so in this div here, in, right, um, we can do an attribute which is name name equals, um, and just just to make sure we have the uh, the value here, okay, um, first name. So if we copy this, this should evaluate our uh, first name. Boom, there we go. So, and it's one of one. So that's exactly what we needed, and, and that's perfect. So, um, you know, I think this is, a, this is a, you know, a good way to, to pick our CSS selectors. Now, if we actually look at what we're trying to test here, we're going to Facebook, and, and we're landing on the homepage. How do we know we're on the homepage? What, what's the thing that stands out the most? The first name, uh, you know, Input field, that's a good one. You know, uh, sign up this text here, that's another good one. Um, you can really, I mean, you can probably just check all of these things and that's fine, but you have to figure, you have to make the selectors for every single one. And, and that's not a, necessarily a bad thing, but you wanna just pick out the most unique and enough to prove that this is great. Um, if, if the test is actually to see like, make sure the home page rendered correctly and has all the elements, then do that. Let's let's just let's use our first name so we have that and and we're gonna rename this uh, whole selector. Um, oh, also let's let's get the good one. Um, let's take the uh, uh, the ID here. U U underscore O F. Okay, so let's remove this. Add the F. Okay, and this isn't gonna be a selector. This is gonna be our uh, first our first name input. Um, and you know, make sure to name your stuff accordingly. But um, now uh, we're gonna just keep this in code here. We're just gonna keep it right here, and this will be the um, you know selector or selector. So we have that. Um, <clears throat> now, how do we get this to interact with it? Like, if we wanted to click it or do something with it, um, well, we can turn it into a web element. So we can say val, and we'll just say um, First name input element. Nope. Driver dot find element by CSS selector. And let's close this up. Um, and this is complaining because. All right. So, <clears throat> so, oh, yeah, we should also remind. Uh, what is this thing? I misplaced the, the web element. I was trying to create one. Um, so what's happening here? What did I just do? Um, so the the type of uh, object that is, it's called a web element. And these are type of object that allows you to do all kinds of different things with this element. So whether you, is it displayed? Is it selected? Where's its location? What's its text? Uh, I want to click it. Get one of the attributes. What's its CSS value? Or get its CSS value. Um, there's all kinds of different things you can do with these elements. Um, enough for us to kind of traverse through a website. Now, um, to get those, you need to use the driver to find that element by by some kind of means. And the means that we're using is CSS selector. Um, so you you can even do something like this, where it's um, 
um, first name input by equals, and you can have these stored as well, and then you can just pass this in to the first element. So we have our we have our string. Um, I should probably do this correctly, right? We have our string, which is our selector. We have a by, um, and, and you don't need to do this every time. I'm just trying to just break it down a little bit. Um, we need to create, how are you gonna find this? Well, we need to do it by CSS selector, CSS selector and paste in you know our, our selector here. So we'll always find it by the selector. And then last but not least, we wanna put it into an element. So we wanna say driver, find this element and you know find it how to, by means by the CSS selector. And then, you know, the last day would be, uh, you know, first name, uh, element, you know, is it displayed? So assert, assert true that this is displayed. Make sure it's it's there. Um, and the uh, element was not displayed, um, you know, if it, if it was to fail. So, um, you know, this seems like a lot to kind of do for every single time. And you don't really need to do this every time. You can, you can either keep it as a string like this. Um, you can create, create just the by and just pass those in and have these stored. But th the end of the day, you want to have it written once so that you can, manip you can mess with it later down the line. Because if it ever needs to change, you're like, well, now this is in a span or something, or this is in a new class. Um, thing um you know you can change it once and it will always be found later um, which is really really uh, useful now the <clears throat> so we have our element we have our uh that's being found and, and let's just run this let's see what happens it's gonna go to facebook and we're gonna check it out so right click run um let's see build in build in build in all right, so it's gonna to go to facebook.com. It's gonna verify that it is in fact facebook.com. Um, wow, so that happened really, really, really fast. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it passed, so it obviously found that it was in fact displayed, which is really great. Now let's let's do something, let's go a step further, right? Let's take our, we have our web element here. Let's, um, does this have any text? Um, it looks like it does not. Let's find something that has text, the sign in. Let's. Let's extract our sign in here. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, sign up. Sorry, sign up. Um, we have our class here. This seems really messy. I, I don't. I'm not familiar with Facebook's kind of um, way they do things, and we're just going to ignore that for the fact, and just you know, we're going to take these classes because again, if no IDs, use classes. Um, so let's see what happens if we evaluate this. So um, when you when you take classes out, you need to add the dots in front of them, right? So and there's no spaces between them either. Like that, like that. So this is evaluating one of one. Um, so okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this, so we're gonna use it. Um, all I did was add, uh, close these up and add dots, because this means that find an element, all right, let's get it on a bigger, bigger screen. Um, uh, Val, this one is our sign up text. Uh, selector. So it says find an element that has all of these classes um, in one element. Um, so you know that evaluated. However, if you had if you had a space here, right? Spaces between between text means that find an element that has uh, all of these classes, and then anything under this, anything nested inside of this, anywhere, even it doesn't have to be a direct child find this class. So what does that mean? So um, let's, uh, let's find here's an example. Um, if I take this class PVL, right, dot PVL. Uh, and then I said, you know what, find anything with uh, this six s, right. So if I put an arrow and just did six s, right, nothing, nothing evaluates. But then if I put up space, all of a sudden it found six. And it's saying anything under PV, anything under PVL, find it can be nested seven times in. It doesn't matter where it is. It it, it will look for all of them. So that's also nice if you're just like ah, I don't. I, I it's somewhere in there. I don't want to go, you know, div 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 and have all these carrots because then again it's too rigid. So 
uh, just, just keep that in mind when you're when you're pasting in and things of that nature. Again, copy paste is very scary uh, when it comes to coding. Um, so we have our selector. Again, we want to turn this into an element. So we'll sign up um, sign up text element equals. Uh, let's, let's let's let everyone know what what is this. Um, so driver dot find find our element. How are we going to find it? By CSS selector. Um, and what do we want to find? This. Um, <clears throat> we got to make sure. Hey, can you can you make sure this isn't null? And you know what we can do to like, to kind of re remove all that. We'll clean up later. We'll clean up later. Um, find our sign up text. Now, what we want to assert here is we want to make sure it says the text sign up. Like that's what we expect. So let's just put our expectation here. Expected sign up text equals. Uh, and let's just make sure we get it right. Um, usually, what you where you would get this information would be um, oh, come on, where is it? Here it is. Uh, where you get this information should be from a spec. You shouldn't. You should never assume what you see on the website is correct, right? Unless you unless you've already tested it and you already have proof that it's correct. But you should be pulling that information from a, a spec from, you know, maybe the, the developer or PM or whoever it may be. Um, you should never just assume what's on the website and copy paste and make sure that, that that's what it's supposed to be. So um, you always got to be careful of that. Um, but I'm going to make, you know, we'll assume for this, hey, this is the text that it's supposed to be sign up. Um, and we want to evaluate, okay, make sure that it is that text. So we're going to add our assert. Now, we're going to do our assert equals because we were like, it has to be this. It has to have a capital S, a capital U, so on and so forth. So let's see. We have our element up here. And uh, let's let's take our sign up element. And we say, OK, so we have our element, but we want the text from it, right? We don't. So to get that, you just say dot text. Just give me the text. Um, and then. What do we expect? We expect this text to be true. So I expect this to say sign up, and um, we our message would say um, uh, the text you know did not match. Text did not match. Um, and and uh, I think let's uh, let's run this. Make sure we did everything correctly. Uh, again, after we do all this, we're going to do some cleanup, and I'll show you some cool refactoring uh, things we can do to make it really uh, clean for for a later use. Um, so, so that happened really fast, right? Seven seconds, right? Boom, or no, one second to really test it. Um, you know, it's a really fast test, right? You're opening it up, you're going there, you're checking three things, um, and it, it's you know, um, we, we're, we're pretty sh we're pretty certain we're on the Facebook page at this point, right? So if anytime anything ever changed, it changed the text, we know, you know, it, it, it would break and we'd know what to do and we'd find out. Um, but again, you know, kind of going over what we looked at, we looked at some of these CSS selectors, we looked at, you know, ID, we looked at some classes, we looked at what it looks like when classes are t together, uh, what it looks like when classes have spaces. Um, and again, you can always look through here and if you ever get to a, a a point where like man I, there's no way to there's always a way to get a unique uh, there's always a way to get a unique selector and if there isn't I highly recommend one of the things to do is is talk with the developer say hey is there a way we can add uh, an ID here or something so that it's easier for me to manipulate because it really will make your test so much cleaner uh, when you're using IDs right it's just this one thing and if that if it ever moves or something happens or get nested you, you will always have it available to you so um, yeah, so I, I mean, that's CSS selectors in a nutshell. Uh, you know, you don't need to do anything fancy with Firebug anymore. It, everything's, uh, you know, there, right there in Chrome. Um, and so in our next videos or down the line, I'm actually show you how to use page object models. But this is an, uh, just a way to get you started, get your hands dirty, and just start kind of messing with some more of uh, some of the Selenium tools. So until then, guys, keep on automating.